This is a video to get you started with the SNS Grills kettle. This is not going to be a cooking video as much as just an orientation for those who are new to charcoal cooking and kind of don't know where to start. We're going to go through this, do a tour of the whole kettle, tell you kind of how things work. And this is Slow and Sear School 101. <laughs> Let's get started. So all charcoal grills work about the same way. You have air that's coming in from either the bottom or the side, and it goes up out through the top vent. So you regulate your temperatures by controlling how much oxygen the fire gets by using this vent right here. When you open it up a little bit more, the fire gets a little bit hotter. You close it down, it cools down the fire. In a way, it's a little bit like a brake on a car. This is how you hit the brakes on your fire. You close this down and the fire gets smaller. And you do that in conjunction with the vent that's on the bottom here that I'm gonna show you in a minute. But at first this is intimidating, but it's not, like I said, it's not very different than how you operate a propane grill, except instead of regulating the amount of propane, you're regulating amount of, the amount of oxygen that the fire gets. And once you get the hang of it, you'll find you have more control and more temperature range than you would with a propane grill. It's really, really fun. So speaking of lower vent, this is your lower vent right here. I've got my grill up on a stool because I'm trying to get everything in the shot at once. So yours is gonna be a little lower, but anyways, this this is, this is the lower vent. As you can see, when you move this, um, it will open or close the vent, the five vent fan blade on the inside. Now, as you can see, there's little markings on here where it says, O, oh, that means the vent is open. And then where it says X, that vent is closed. Now that serves double duty for us because in addition to being our lower vent air controller, it is also our ash sweep. So we use this between cooks to sweep out the ash. So you move this back and forth, the ash falls down into the ash bucket and then we can remove the ash bucket and take and throw out the ash. Make sure you don't do that till after it's cooled down. Trust me, I learned that one the hard way. It was a long time ago. <laughs> so those vents are great they do a good job in fact they're actually oversized so you have air more airflow with this kettle than you would with some of the others that are on the market but the problem with them is you can't see them so it is nice to have those little markings underneath um, and I, you know that's worked fine in the past but sns went the extra mile and put in a little smoke hole here. So this is a one inch hole with a damper over the top where you can set the, the temperature or set the airflow wherever you want from underneath. So you can close those lower vents, the five vent uh, fan blade on low and slow cooks, and then just use this to control your airflow. So it gives you some more finite temperature control that you might not have on another cooker. So that's pretty cool. But on top of that, um, if you ever want to use a temperature controller down the line, um, you're already plumbed for it. So you don't have to drill a hole in your kettle to make that happen. So very good idea, very useful, something that's really cool that you have in your kettle. On this opposite side, you also have the probe port. That is really nice for fishing. Um, if you wanna use a remote thermometer, check out our website if you wanna find a good one. But you can string your probes through here without having to run it underneath the lid of the kettle or down through the cooking vent. So that's a really nice feature and uh, a good add-on. And that is what that is for. So we also have a big beefy handle here in the front. That's pretty obvious. What might not be quite as obvious is you have two big tool hooks. So if you want to put your barbecue tongs or hang a grill brush there, you have a place to do it. Nice and convenient, that's cool. Also over on this side, you've got your adjustable side table. The good thing about this is you can put it up and you can hold up to 20 pounds. So that's great for things like briskets and, and pork butts and stuff like that. But when you're done with it, you can raise it and lower it out of the way, put a cover over it and it just sort of disappears. On this side, you also have a lid cradle. So this makes it really easy to store your lid. You don't have to put it on the ground or hang it off the edge of the kettle or anything like that. So this is nice and convenient. Also, if the wind's coming from this direction, you can point this towards the wind and it acts as kind of a windbreak, which is really nice. So that is convenient and it's right there. 
Also at the very bottom, you have a nice big storage area that you can use to store stuff in between cooks. And then while you're cooking, you can use this as a place to put hot or greasy things that like a chimney starter or something like that. You don't have to worry about it getting any of your stuff greasy or, or, or burned. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now let's take a look at the inside. I put the grill back on the ground so we can take a peek at this. First thing you see when you put the lid over into its cradle is that five vent fan blade again. These charcoal grates, and as they imply, the name implies, they're what holds the charcoal in place. They take a beating. So most, many companies, what they do is they just put a cheap steel grate in and they know it's gonna rust out and you'll just come back and buy a new one. s, &S went the extra mile and they porcelain coated this so it should last longer. We'll see, but it certainly was a nice touch. I appreciate them making the effort. And then this is where I prefer to put my slow ins here. I put it on on the back side of the kettle. So what that does for me is when I put meat on, I'll have the charcoal on this side, I'll have the meat on this side. I want my top vent to face the side that the food is on so that that thermometer will be right there, right over where the food will be. So that's why I put my slow ends here on the back side. Some people like to put it over on this wall underneath the, uh, underneath the lid. That's fine, whatever works for you. I just like this placement because of the, where it puts the vent or where it puts the vent and the thermometer. And then of course, it gives me access right here to the, uh, the probe port for bringing probes into the cooker. So on top of this goes the cooking grate. This is the easy spin grate. And they call it that because if you're going to do the cold grate method, you can spin this really easily without any of the uh, material hanging up on these liftoffs that hold the grate up. You'll find that very convenient. It's a great way to make a steak. Look up the cold grate technique if you get a chance. But what's great about this is it's 304 stainless. And what that means it's gonna last forever. I mean, it's got a 10 year warranty and I'm thinking that's a pretty safe bet on, on SNS Grills' part. I don't think they're ever going to have to replace one of these because of failing or rusting or anything like that. So this is a really, really nice grate. But what also makes it perfect for using with the slow and sear is this hinge is exactly the size of the slow ends here, not including the water pan. So at the area where this flips up actually prevents charcoal if you're adding more charcoal from landing in the water pan look at this look at this this is your water pan area right here it covers up the water pan so as you add charcoal it falls into the basket instead of the water pan another really really nice touch i think you guys are going to enjoy using this kettle we'll have plenty of other uh, videos on this web page telling you how to do this sort of thing more slow and sear school videos more of the recipe videos so if you have any questions check that out also don't be afraid to email us info at snsgrills.com and remember at sns grills two zones are better than one